Okay, um, hello everyone. My name's Joel, and this is Ralph. Um, we're from a performance, a contemporary performance company called Bench Culture. So do I just tap this? Are we all, we just got, we've got a little um, device that we've mocked up for a um, to sort of read the room sort of device, but I won't explain too much. We'll just demonstrate how it works. So just tap this. Is this, we all good to go? So um, basically, the first trigger is just activated by a simple clap. Oh, do you? Are you going backwards, Ralph? Uh, yeah. All right, we'll try again. again. Yeah, we do a lot of this sort of, you know, this kind of thing. So, clap. <laughs> no? Should we move on, John? We might just have to skip that bit. Oh, no, I can hear it. It's just really quiet. The third track is triggered by an absence of sound or gesture. OK, here we go. So now we just need to keep quiet. Hang on. The fourth track is triggered by a minimum 85% of the audience thinking of a pink elephant. <laughs> the fifth and final track is triggered by the audience applauding riotously. <laughs> Close enough. Well done. You have triggered all the tracks. Okay, so we're still ironing out a few of the kinks in that one, but maybe you get the idea. Um, over the past few years, Joel and I have been exploring different ways of uh, making audio-based theatrical experiences for solo users. And in doing this, we've had to kind of learn to, uh, to balance our desire to explore new opportunities offered by technology with a need to really dig into what's possible with the tools that we already have, uh, such as an MP3 track. Um, in other words, if this device were actually real, that'd be great, but it would be a long road for us to figure out how to make it work and what to do with it. Um, and we found it's easy to overlook the journey that you need to take when you get cool new technology to play with, uh, and, uh, you know, and it's easy to forget about the potential of the tools that you already have. Uh, I'm gonna grab the clicker there, Joel. <laughs> um, so we've done a, a range of experiments with quite simple technology. Uh, this is a musical retelling of Pocahontas for your local supermarket. Um, it's called Into the New World. Uh, this is a touristic experience for public parks, this next one. And, and both of these are created just with MP3 tracks. Um, but our first project was an unauthorized audio guide to Te Papa. Um, and this was a single 40-minute uh, audio track. And we, even with this simple technology, we spent a long time grappling with how to use it, did a lot of testing and retesting in the space. Um, and I'll add that we made this before I began my current role as a writer here at Te Papa, so uh, hence the unauthorized tag. Um, so what we'll play for you now is from the end of the tour, and this is where the forces of evil are really closing in on you. Okay, so just outside of the toilets, we're gonna head out towards the center of the museum, so just face Stop. Up. Stop right there. Tie your shoes. Tie your shoes right now. You've been compromised. We need to do exactly what we say when we say it, okay? Okay, stop tying your shoes and stand up. See the walker. Head toward it, but turn right down the corridor. Okay, past the house. Hurry, we've got to move. Okay, make like you're heading towards those trees. See the rock sculpture? The rock sculpture? Duck left. Duck left into the alcove. Wait here. Okay, act like you're playing with the touch screen. Okay, on my mark, go back out. Okay, five, four, three, two, one, now. Okay, out and left. Head towards the palm trees, past the walker thing. Okay, towards the trees. Keep that corned beef ball to your left. To the left, at the trees. Okay, now slow, slow down. 
head through this part of the museum casually. Turn slightly left and head toward the glowing boards with friendly faces on them. That woman, I think she's one of them. Middle-aged woman? Negative. I think she's reaching for something. Not a threat. Stay on the line you're on. Do not deviate. Keep heading toward those smiling, glowing faces. Um, yeah, so that was, that was the first one. And, uh, and, you know, we found that we could do quite a lot with just a very limited sort of palette, so to speak, technological palette. Uh, already we're sort of able to cre create an experience which um, uh, creates a theatrical experience outside of a theatre that puts the um, audience in the role of the protagonist. Um, and then we sort of, we did a few of those uh, in different sort of styles and genres. I mean, we got really excited about doing something um, that would be kind of like outrageously huge over the whole city, GPS triggering, you know, people could kind of like, you know, interact with the whole city in, in a kind of fictional and uh, blurring of fictional and uh, fiction and reality in a kind of interesting way. And that had a lot of um, technical difficulties, as you, can, as you saw before, we, we struggle with operating simple technology. Um, <laughs> so we spent a lot of time grappling with that and trying to solve that, and then we, we actually found that if we just downsized, um, to, uh, we, we, not only were we able to achieve what we wanted to do a lot easier, but we also managed to, um, having that restriction, restricted technology, so in this case it was more like a museum guide where you put in the numbers and stuff. When you get to the different parts of the city, you could, um, you could get, we had that restriction which helped our creativity and helped our creative process. So we're just gonna do a little bit, if we've got a little bit of time, since we're the last ones, I think we can probably get away with it, I don't know. <laughs> um, we'll, um, we'll just do a little, just a few uh, seconds from the, this work in progress, which, so you come up to this, um, Parking meter, which Ralph um, so generously offered to play <laughs> and, uh, and you press, say, fifth day, that's the number that's on the parking meter. You come to one of the shrines. Uh, so there's two kinds of shrines. Of the shrines. shrines. There's the older kind, and they sort of look like a forked tree, and the others are more of an oblong, almost like a coffin shape. Um, uh, the size of a child. Um, <laughs> it's just the same function, they, it's just the, the period that they were made. Okay, so what you can do is just walk up to the shrine and uh, just bow once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you take out a coin, and it can be any coin, uh, but gold coins are usually considered to be the most lucky. <laughs> take the coin and you Place it into, do you see a little slot? <laughs> <laughs> so you can do that now if you like. And by doing that, what this does is it's sending the coin kind of symbolically back to the, the center of the earth. And then uh, you can step, step back in the shrine and just clap twice and just pray that we don't all die from climate change. And then just a little bow again, and that's it.